What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully, you're having a great day. Welcome back to Learning Roblox Studio. In today's episode, we are going to be covering the Introduction to Saving Data course. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to a lot of the scripts that I make on my other videos, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go check it out. Finally, I do have a link down below in the description to the documentation you're seeing on screen right now. If you guys would like to read it or follow along or copy any of the code from it link down below in the description you guys go check it out with that being said let's get into it introduction to saving data games often need to store some amount of persistent data between sessions like a player's level experience points inventory gold cash and more this course will show you how to create a basic data store save sample data and read the data back into the game session now let's go ahead and hop into studio and open up any game or project that you've been working on i've of course opened up the game that we've been working on this entire time so we're going to resume from there enabling studio access by default games tested in studio cannot access data stores so you must first enable them make sure you have the game published now i just load up a brand new game to show you guys how to publish it so the way that we would do this is by going to file publish to roblox and then we can enter in the different information right here and then just click create and that'll actually publish it to roblox so once you've published it to roblox go to the home tab and then click on game settings then go down to the security and then we want to enable studio access to api services and then we can hit save and now we can access data stores creating a data store. Data stores are identified by a unique name. In this example, a data store named Player Gold will save each player's gold to persistent storage. So we're going to go ahead into the server script service and create a brand new script and we'll rename that to Gold Manager. And then we want to get the data store service. So we're going to say local data store service equals game get service data store service then we want to create a variable for our gold data store so we're going to say local gold store which the store is referring to the data store equals data store service then we're going to use the get data store function and we're going to put in the name of our data store that we're looking for and we're going to call this one player gold you can name this literally anything, just a bunch of characters, numbers, it literally doesn't matter, or you could call it player gold, but make sure that you stick to one name upon release, because like, let's say I change this from player gold to player gold one, this is going to get a fresh brand new database, and we're not going to be able to access any of the data that we had in player gold. It's not going to wipe the database or any of the data in player gold, it's just going to create and use a completely different database when we're using player gold one, instead of the same one that we've been using this entire time, for instance. Saving data. A data store is essentially a dictionary like a Lua table. Each value in the data store is indexed by a unique key. For instance, the player's unique user ID or simply a named string for a game promo. We can see the player data example where the key is actually the player's user ID and then the value is most likely their gold or some other currency. And then we can see promo examples where these are more static so the key would just be a string and then the value of that would be another string. Then we want to create a variable called player user ID for the data store key. So we're going to say local player user ID. And then we're going to just pass through a combination of random numbers. And I'll just put in the ones that they're using from the documentation. And then we want to create a variable for the player's gold. So we're going to say local player gold, and we're going to set the amount of gold that a player has to 250. Now we want to save this data. And the way that we do that is by calling the set async on the gold store, which is the data store that we have. This process is definitely a little bit different than normal. Let's just lay this out and then we'll explain it when we're done. We're going to create two brand new variables. So we're going to say local set success comma and then another variable which is error message and we're going to set that to equal pcall which is a function and then inside of this function we're going to create another function and we're going to say gold store set async and inside of the set async we're going to pass through the player user id and we're going to pass through the player gold as well so the set async is going to save it to the gold store database that we're using and the key is going to be the user's id and the value is going to be the player's gold so if we looked inside of this database later it's going to say that this player right here actually has this specific amount of gold the next we want to say if not set success which means that this actually kind of failed and didn't go as planned. Then we want to warn, which is similar to the print function. So we're going to see the error in the console and we're going to warn the with the error message, which like I said, is similar to the print statement. So now we're going to see the error message if this fails. So now let's go over what a P call actually is. P call stands for protected calls. Functions like set async are network calls that may occasionally fail. As shown above, P call is used to detect and handle when such failures occur. In the most basic form, P call accepts a function and returns two values. 
types. The status, which is a boolean, this will be true if the function executed without errors or false otherwise, and the other value that it returns is the return value of the function or an error message. In the sample above, the status, set success, is tested on line 12, and if set async failed for any reason, error message is displayed in the output window. So for maybe a little bit of a simpler explanation, pcall is actually wrapping this function right here of the gold store, and this function is actually able to fail because it's a network function. And if it fails, we don't want it to ruin the entire script. That's why we're wrapping it in a pcall function so that we can also see if it does fail. And if it does fail, then set success is actually not going to be true. And it's also going to return an error message as well. So after we run this function, we're then going to check and see if success has failed. And then we're going to output this message in the console if it does fail so that we know something's going on and we should probably look into it. Usually the only reason that set async should fail is if the Roblox services are down, which definitely does happen. Otherwise, you're probably doing something wrong. Although for the most part, as long as you follow some guides, you should not ever have any issues with set async. And most of the time, it's usually on Roblox's end. Be careful to not send requests to data stores too often. Requests on a data store key are placed in a queue. And if that queue fills up, additional requests will be dropped. A common mistake may be updating a player's gold data every time they collect a gold piece. Instead, store the player's gold in a variable and only update the data store occasionally, such as with a periodic autosave and slash or when the player leaves the game. Now, they provided no example of that. I'm not going to lie, this guy that they made is really, really, really poorly made. It really doesn't teach you that much how to actually use it in your own game or like the standard way that people actually use. You could probably find a better guy by literally looking up how to use data stores Roblox and finding a post on the development forums, which is pretty surprising. But I'll definitely try to help you guys more towards the end of this. Let's just go ahead and finish this tutorial real quick. So reading data. To read data from the data store, call get async with the desired key name. So after the if not success, we're going to kind of do the same thing. So we're going to say local get success, which is creating another variable. And we're going to create another variable called current gold because we're getting the player's current gold. We're going to set that to another P call. And of course, inside the P call, we want to make a function. And then we are actually going to return something this time. And what we're going to return is the gold store. And on the gold store, we are calling the get async function. And we're passing through the key of the player user ID. So remember, when we call set async, we pass through the key of the player's ID up here, and then we pass through the value that we want to set to the key. So then when we want to get the value, all we have to do is pass through the key, and then it will return the value to us. Then since this is a P call, we're going to say if get success, which means that this did run completely fine, we're going to go ahead and print out current gold. So now we're able to see how much gold the player actually has. So we can run our game and see that 250 will be printed out in the console. And that's how we know our data store service has worked, because now data has been transferred even after the server shut down, which means that players can leave the server, exit the game, come back later, play the game again, and still have all the data that they left with. Anyway, with that being said, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. As always, if you guys did, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go check it out and gain access to a lot of scripts that I've made in my other videos. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.